Eastern Division showdown in the Southeastern Conference. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. First of all, for the Razorbacks, coached by Nolan Richardson, Brandon Davis, and Alonzo Lane, Teddy Gibson, the sophomore, and Brandon Dean, and Blake Evans. Evans getting his first start of the year for the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is the 16th different starting lineup this year for Nolan Richardson. Now let's take a look at Auburn's starting lineup. The Tigers coached by Cliff Ellis. Chris Porter, last year's SEC Player of the Year, having a tremendous season again. David Fishback, the senior. Mamadou Njai, the senior center, the seven-footer. Scott Pullman and Doc Robinson, who leads the Southeastern Conference in assist to turnover ratio, really takes great care of the basketball for this Auburn Tiger ball club. When we come back, the opening tip from Auburn, Alabama. A sellout crowd is on hand to watch the Tigers and the Razorbacks. We'll be back. It's time for another Piccadilly People profile. Meet Johnny Williamson, truck driver and vegetarian. Today, Johnny's starting with a sensible salad or two, broccoli, corn, and, of course, vegetable soup. Can't forget that carrot cake. Yep, Piccadilly's 50 feet of hot, wholesome, home-style cooking can handle just about any taste, not to mention appetite. Piccadilly Cafeteria. Who says you can't please everybody? Kickbox your way to total fitness. Kick it, a knockout workout with four-time national aerobics champion Terry Reeves. It's energizing, fat-burning fun. Go three rounds with Terry and her friends. Learn the basics and enjoy a beginner workout in round one. Press for time, take the express route and tone while you box in round two. Ready for the knockout? Round three takes you to the limit with the best total body workout you've ever had. To order the Kick It Knockout Workout, just call 1-800-599-7755 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. During Suncom's ultimate trade-in event, we'll take just about anything as a trade-in for a $100 service credit on airtime or other items. Ryan, get your brother. <laughs> Maybe I should trade you in. Ryan, it's a good deal. See store for details. Little brother's not eligible for trade-in. Welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. Beautiful day in uh, February, and a great crowd inside. Series record. Arkansas leads it overall. Uh, these two clubs only playing for the 18th time. Four and four in Auburn. They split last year's two meetings with the home team coming out on top both times. And they play one more time this year. Uh, it seemed like Auburn has caught uh, Arkansas on senior night a lot here recently, late in the season. There's Doc. He's been tremendous handling the ball, Barry. Yeah, incredible. Is uh, that 58 assists and 11 turnovers in the last 11 games, 5.3 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. Phenomenal. And well, when you play a pressure defense and an up-tempo offense, having a guy like that is just uh, extremely valuable. There was a whistle before the shot, which went in by Pullman. On Lane, Alonzo Lane away from the ball. Our officials for today: Don Rutledge, Gene Manji, Bruce Benedict. And Arkansas very much outmanned inside today. They're going to have a tough time contending with Chris Porter and Mamadou Inja down low for Auburn. Well, that's where the obvious mismatch is in favor of Auburn. This back launches a three, and the rebound ricochets out of bounds, and will go to Arkansas. Well, Arkansas has a, a size disadvantage, but they should have a quickness advantage against Auburn. A lot of guards on the court for Arkansas most of the day. Guys used to handling the basketball. They should be able to drive by and get to the basket. And they'll shoot a lot of threes. We expect here today. Davis drives to the basket. Tough break. Rebound by Lane. Evans battling inside. Good job on the boards early for Arkansas. But they turn it over. You see the size come into play. Dean just couldn't get that shot off. All those long arms inside for Auburn. Lane trying to match up with the seven-footer in John. And Mamadou is called for traveling. Yeah, Mamadou needs to just catch it and go quickly against these smaller Arkansas defenders. Just go right at them, turn around and shoot over these smaller players. Cliff Ellis in his sixth year at Auburn. 25th year in collegiate coaching. 
Yeah, there was no double team on Njai that time, and uh, you're right, he hesitated too long. Great shot by Lane as uh, bodies are flying, but tremendous shot in close by Alonzo Lane. And a good job by Arkansas taking it inside. Even though you have the shot blocker down low, you still got to take it at him. Alonzo Lane did a nice job getting that one up and in off the glass. Trying to exploit the size inside, and a nice little jump hook by Mamadou Njai. You see what Auburn wants to do, jam it inside on their offensive possessions. Dean on the drive, shovels it through the lane and out of bounds. Good idea, but Lane was not looking for the pass. And here's Arkansas, last time down, taking it inside. Alonzo Lane goes up, takes the contact from Fishback, and still able to drop it in off the glass. Pretty move from Alonzo Lane. Remarkable record Nolan Richardson has put together at the University of Arkansas. The Tigers turn it over. These two clubs both have a wide turnover margin. They're one and two in the SEC, and turnover margin. Arkansas gives it right back to the Tigers. Both teams create a lot of mistakes by the others, so this should be interesting today. Yeah, Auburn is an aggressive half-court defensive club. Arkansas likes to put that full-court pressure on. As today, so far, Arkansas with three turnovers, Auburn with only two. A little sloppy here early. We played two minutes. 10 seconds from Auburn, Alabama. And we're tied at two apiece. Auburn, a 28-game home court winning streak. Fourth longest in college basketball. Dean really making a touch with Pullman. Nice job by Pullman to find his own shot. Scott Pullman can do that, can surprise you and put it on the floor, create his own shot. That was a nice shot against a tough defender. And Arkansas answers on the jumper by Lane. He has all four Razorback points. Alonzo Lane showing a little range there. And at the other end of the court for Auburn, Scott Pullman just moving with the basketball, putting it on the floor, creating a little space against Brandon Dean. Great shot from Scott Pullman. Pullman coming off 17 points against Alabama Wednesday night. Njai in the post. Nice drop step. Lane uh, going to have problems with him without getting any help. Absolutely. Mamadou Njai doing a good job taking advantage of his advantage over Alonzo Lane. Here's the freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. And the putback as Arkansas gets an offensive rebound from Brandon Davis. Great job on the board so far by Arkansas. Doing a really nice job on their offensive glass. Brandon Davis coming up with that putback. Very nice. Here's Porter touching the ball for the first time today. Njai rebounds, holds on to it. Let's see. I think Don Rutledge is going to call a foul on Gibson. Yeah, screening a little bit too much, trying to trying to keep Porter from catching up with that basketball. Gibson a little bit too aggressive. Well, that's one thing you got to love about Chris Porter, oh. Barry. He plays so hard oh, from start to finish. You can see it. He goes 100% all the time, just flying all over the place. He's trimmed that hairstyle down a little bit, <laughs> even from last week, I think. Fishback, his second three, no good. Right back into his lap, he reloads. <laughs> good job by Scott Pullman, keeping it alive, and Fishback showing the confidence to take that same shot again and knock it out. No conscience by Damon Fitzback. He's fired three threes already. Tough rebound and then a careless foul against Arkansas. Brandon Davis. Arkansas. Yeah, Auburn is at, or Arkansas is having a tough time with Auburn's size inside. But they're hanging in there and doing a good job on the offensive boards as well. Auburn ranked 10th in the country, leading the Razorbacks early in the first half. Advanced Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 a quart? Yeah. If 
Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. I wonder what would happen if my beer was ever lost or stolen. I mean, how would I be able to prove it's mine? So I'm thinking, mine's the one with the head that's exactly 2.3 fingers thick. It's the one with the color that stops sunlight dead in its tracks. And it's the one that never, ever tastes watered down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could pick my beer out of a police lineup if I had to. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. Ice house. Enjoy. So, how's the food here? Great, Mom. Pizza every day. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, it's not what you had in college, Mom. It's Papa John's. But you need variety. Variety? That's Papa's choice. You get five toppings for $9.99. What about your veggies? Their veggies are great, especially the fresh baby portobello mushrooms. Order Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of five toppings for a meager $9.99. I'm living better than I ever did at home. I wouldn't say that. Back in Auburn, Alabama, the Tigers lead the Razorbacks 9 to 6 in the first half. Blake Eddins, the freshman from Montgomery, Alabama, making his first start of the year. And an interesting story here, he's got some serious Auburn <laughs> University ties, Barrett. Yeah, his dad was a linebacker for Auburn in the early 70s, and they live in Montgomery. They have some family here in Auburn, and his dad, Liston, brought the kids over to, uh, to this Coliseum and took jump shots for Christmas, kind of a Christmas tradition. And uh, Blake was scheduled to go to Auburn and enrolled in summer school classes, but got a scholarship from Arkansas and landed there, catching his first start of his career today against the Hall or against Auburn. Owner Richardson likes to do that when a kid is coming back to his hometown area. Gibson, the left-hander, misfiring. Davis poked it away from Fishback, and it's put in by the Razorback. You gotta like the way they're battling on the offensive end. Lane now has six points. And Davis is really hurting. He, he may have dislocated his left shoulder, really dragging his left arm right now. Number 20 for Arkansas, having a tough time. Still in there. Holman is playing with a lot of confidence on the offensive end. Yeah, putting the ball on the floor and getting those pull-up jump shots to go down. Holman really playing with huge confidence lately for the Tigers. Auburn man-to-man. This young Arkansas team gives it inside to Lane again. He draws triple team coverage, and Auburn takes it away from him. And Lane's got to go a little more quickly with it than that. Auburn gives it right back. Brandon Dean hung up in the lane, almost traveled. Coleman hits the deck, no call. Dean says, why not just shoot the ball? Nothing <laughs> else seems to be working, and the ball will go out of bounds. I think we have a... Oh, no foul. It's going to go to, to the Auburn Tigers. A little bit sloppy. This is really playing into Arkansas's hands. They want this to be a, a full-court scramble. Auburn a much better half-court team. Substitution. D.J. Cleveland checks in. He started 12 times for the Razorbacks. Eddins checks out of the game. And Chris Walker checks in for Arkansas. Nolan Richardson shuttles players in and out routinely. Yeah, absolutely. Richardson likes to use a lot of players. Really, both these teams will use nine and ten players today. Also, Carl Baker has checked in. And Rob for Fishback from Doc Robinson. Well designed and well executed against the Auburn 2-3 zone. P.J. Cleveland. Sophomore point guard out of Birmingham, Alabama. Almost lost it. Lane hustling to the deck, saves it for Arkansas. Chris Porter again, knocking the ball away. Gibson, that will count, and a foul is called. That's a, a three-point field goal for Gibson. I think it was after the shot, so Arkansas will get possession on the sideline. Well, that could be a very big play for Nolan Richardson. A turning trip. You see Gibson making the move on Doc Robinson and pulls up for that three-pointer. Robinson trying to block him out, and they got a little bit tangled up. Robinson got caught pushing off, trying to get rebound position. So now Arkansas a chance for a, maybe a six-point trip. Exactly. <laughs> they love to shoot the threes. Satchel checked in as well. The big fella throws it out on the wing. Cleveland misfires the three. Quarter rebound to Doc Robinson. 
Nice board by Porter. It looked like Satchel had that one in his sights. Just couldn't come up with it. Robinson so clever and a rare turnover when he handles it. Well, not sure that was his fault. He has uh, McGadden. He should have been on the same page with him. Didn't step to the basket as Robinson penetrated. Should have been an easy basket for Auburn. Here is Walker, the senior, the old man of this Arkansas team. <laughs> And they have one senior and one junior on the roster with seven freshmen. And a three by Carl Baker. Only a seventh three-point field goal attempt of the year, and he's made four of them. <laughs> Can definitely put it in the basket from out there. And Arkansas shooting well from the perimeter, keeping themselves in this ballgame early. Playing very hard, as you have to do against this Auburn team, and that's uh, the trademark of the Razorbacks anyhow. Holman got a screen from Porter. Look at the Razorbacks go after the rebound. Carl Baker in traffic. Chris Walker. Tough, tough shot over Doc Robinson. Robinson was all over him, but Walker able to drop that one in. And here comes the pressure from the Razorbacks, and Auburn has to use a timeout. It's a good start for Nolan Richardson and the Razorbacks as they take an early lead in Auburn, Alabama against number 10, Auburn. The Tigers getting the lob to fish back, but they trail by three in the first half. We'll be back. I'm Reggie White. In all my life, I've had to be tougher than the next guy. After all, it takes a strong, powerful man to do what I do for a living. But I believe it takes even a bigger man to ask for help when life's problems get to be too much. But what's guided me through life's turbulent times has been my personal relationship with God. It's given me hope, it's given me peace, it's given me happiness. If life sometimes gets you down, if it just seems too much at times, there's a book that can start you on your way to a personal relationship with God. It's called Power for Living, and it's an incredible book. It's honest, easy to read, and tells it like it is in helping you get your life back on track. Powerful Living. It can show you how to cope with the everyday problems that plague us all. For your free copy of Powerful Living, call toll-free 1-800-442-8888. There's no obligation. Call now for your free copy of Powerful Living. Call now to start your personal relationship with God. We're giving away $1,000, yes, $1,000 in cash and prizes will be given away in Montgomery's gigantic indoor flea market Saturday, February 12th. We're located in the old service merchandise building on East South Boulevard across from the big white water tower in Woodley Road in the Capitol Plaza Shopping Center. Open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 9 to 6 year round. 250 inside heated and air-conditioned booths of guaranteed unbelievable bargains at Montgomery's gigantic indoor flea market. Come on in this weekend and register to win the $1,000 giveaway February 12th. Be there at Montgomery's gigantic indoor flea market. Arkansas leads Auburn with 12-10 to play in the first half. Who are the five best basketball players in SEC history? You decide. Go online at jpsports.com. Vote for the All-Century team. Brought to you by Sleep In. When you vote, you may be a weekly winner of two free nights at any Sleep In and enter to win an expense-paid two-day weekend at Kiowa Island Resort in South Carolina. You can also vote by mail. Send your selections to the address on the screen. Make your choice for the All-Century team. Presented by Sleep In. Tell you, Barry, I was on there... Uh, online the other day and cast uh, my votes for the All-Century team. Pete Maravich and Kyle Macy out top. I got to tell you, the pistol got my vote there. <laughs> Alan Houston and Todd Day at the shooting guard. Goose Gibbons, a partner in Orlando, leading Wilkins. And the power forward center spots we'll show you a little bit later. I'm trying to stuff the ballot box, but it's not <laughs> working for Barry Booker. Not quite getting there. Max McGadney. There's a three for McGadney. McGadney, a good perimeter shooter, got wide open. They're tied at 16. Dean. Good D down low by Sharp. Taking a charge. Satchel trying to back down low and get position. Sharp just held his ground, took the charge. Nice job by Reggie Sharp, the junior from Shannon, Mississippi. The three-point shot by Mac McGadney tied the score at 16. Auburn will have the ball when we come back. Why are business travelers choosing Sleep In? 
The well-lit grounds, the electronic locks, the walk-in showers, complimentary breakfast, because it's a place that understands the needs of the business traveler. It's all those things, plus the service. Hey, knock it off. Is incredible. If you're traveling on business, stay at Sleep In, in a class by itself. Of all the stories you've come to know, the most important by far is your own. With no other story, you care so much about how it turns out. Are you just waiting to see, or are you writing it the way you want it to go? At Jefferson Pilot Financial, we're doing more than providing financial services. We're helping you write the story of your life. The SEC tournament is just around the corner. Join us at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, March 9th through 12th, for what promises to be one of the most wide-open, competitive tournaments in recent history. Tickets are still available, but they're going fast. Call 1-800-994-7321 to order. SEC tournament in Atlanta. Make your plans today. The Georgia Dome. Great site for the SEC tournament. It'll be a lot of fun. Wide open, too. Well, you've oh, got yeah. six teams in the SEC ranked in the top 25 for the first time in conference history. And you've got a couple of others that aren't too far back. Very strong and balanced league this year. Nice little high-low action, but uh, McGadney made the mistake of putting the ball on the floor. A lot of quickness out here for Arkansas. It's hard to bounce it with all those quick guys or the Razorbacks. Won't well, put it out there because they'll take it away from it. Walker. Defended by McGadney. That ball just slipped out of his hands. Sixth yeah. turnover on the Razorbacks. Good D that time by McGadney. Just stayed in front of Walker, and uh, Walker just lost it. Auburn, such a good half-court defensive ball club. Make you earn everything you get. We are still tied at 16. Scott Coleman, pick and roll out high with Porter. Good man-to-man -man defense by the Razorbacks. Oh, Cleveland almost took the ball out of the arms of Fishback. <laughs> it's all over Fishback. TJ Cleveland has great hands, leads the league and steals at over three a game. You can see the quick hands that he has, always looking to get his hands on the basketball. He had five steals in a game against Alabama. McGadney, he's made two straight from that spot. He's feeling it from right there. You got to get out there to him. Make him put the ball on the floor. Baker launches a three, rebounded by Sharp. Reggie Sharp pushing it. Pullman. And a blocking foul on Arkansas. Good job by Sharp getting it quickly down the court. And Scott Pullman running the court, getting in front of the pack. Nice feed through traffic to get it down low to Pullman. He takes it up strong. Cleveland definitely moving underneath him. And Pullman almost uh, cracked his head on the court as he uh, went through that contact. Scott Pullman, a 79% free throw shooter. This is the first. Jay Hurd checks in for Damian Fishback for Auburn. And Teddy Gibson returns for the Razorbacks. And these two ball clubs will uh, give the scorers table their work today. We'll be running players in and out all afternoon. Holman missed two. Look at Porter hustle after those ball. He lost it out of bounds, but still great effort by Chris Porter. Auburn 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Arkansas trying to spread the court against this Auburn man-to-man -man defense, trying to create some driving opportunities, trying to take the ball to the basket. Satchel, and it knocked away in a foul on Auburn. See if they gave it to Brewer. Yep, Jamison Brewer picks up the foul, his first. Auburn does a nice job pressuring the basketball, yet still being able to recover and cover the basket. When the ball goes inside, they'll have two or three guys around the basketball and force Arkansas to kick it back out. And before the ball is inbounded, Don Rutledge sees some contact inside, and a foul is uh, called on. Who was that? McGann got the foul. Yeah, away from the basketball, trying to fight through the screen. Blake Edmonds back in the game for the Razorbacks. An open shot. Davis passed it up, drives baseline. Gibson ties the game. Nice shot by Teddy Gibson. Took his time, lined that three-point shot up, and knocked it out. A good job by the Razorbacks also driving the ball to the basket, creating double teams down low. Gandhi in the open court. Offensive foul, takes away the basket. <laughs> we saw Nolan Richardson working the officials a few moments ago when there was a block charge play. Richardson was all over the officials saying that was a charge. That was definitely a charge. This time he gets the call, and it's a good call. I think both calls were a good call. That time, David set up real well and took the charge right in his chest. And he comes down at the other end and drills a three. Brandon Davis done doing good work for the Hogs this afternoon. He's got five already. We've got a great first half from Auburn, Alabama. Bird lost the handle and a foul. I think McGandy got it. Another excellent defensive play by Brandon Davis. He faked it heard, made him think that he was going to double team him, and then got back to his man and stepped in to intercept that pass. Again, he has to go to the bench, having picked up three fouls. That's a factor for the Auburn Tigers. He's a, a key player off their bench. And again, a very good three-point shooter, as we've seen this afternoon. But when you can bring Brit Chris Porter, the All-American, in for him, you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> well, you've got to like the way the Razorbacks have come out here, though, Barry. They turn it over here, but still 8.54 to go in the first half. And here's Arkansas with a three-point lead on Auburn's home floor. Yeah, they're hanging in there, doing a great job. And, and, you know, the key for Arkansas, they have to shoot the basketball well to hang in this game, and they're doing it so far. Doc Robinson, pick and roll with Njai. High-low action, Porter to the big fella. Mamadou missed the shot. Arkansas rebounds it. Gibson heads the other way. Another three. Dean drills it. Brandon Dean knocking it out, lining up that three-pointer in transition. Arkansas has this game going the way they want it to. It's a, a scramble from end to end, and that's how they want to play. Auburn needs to get it settled down into a half-court game. Jamison Brewer takes it to the basket for the Auburn Tigers. The freshman from East Point, Georgia. Auburn trying to pick up the pressure in the man-to-man. -man. And they force an Arkansas turnover. Chris Porter again with a quick hand. Robinson. Brewer, very high energy right now for the Tigers, runs it down in midcourt. Both these clubs really playing hard. Robinson, the floater. Oh, he is so tough with that shot. Able to float that thing in off the glass. A very difficult shot. Doc Robinson makes it look easy. Gibson left unguarded. <laughs> Quiets the crowd. Teddy Gibson once again knocking out the three-pointer. Arkansas has made its last four shots. Gibson has three threes in the first half. The Razorbacks lead by five. And it is another turnover for Auburn. 
That's 10 first half turnovers for the Tigers. They average only 15 per game. So Arkansas with that pressure defense creating a lot of mistakes by the Auburn Tigers. And the Razorbacks have the lead 28-23 trying to snap Auburn's 28 game home court win streak. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 a quart? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. If you're a college basketball fan, Piccadilly Cafeteria has the opportunity of a lifetime for you. The chance for you and a friend to be members of the Jefferson Pilot Sports television crew for one of the biggest college basketball tournaments in the nation. Register to win at any Piccadilly Cafeteria or send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number. The winner, announced on March 4th, will get an all-expense paid trip to work with J.P.'s crew during the tournament telecast in Atlanta, Georgia, March 9th through 11th. So register to win today. Join us Wednesday for SEC Basketball 2006 ranked Tennessee plays host to the Georgia Bulldogs. The Bulls look to get back on track and continue their quest for the SEC crown. Our other game pits the Alabama Crimson Tide against the Arkansas Razorback from the Bud Barn. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Don't miss the action Wednesday beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, Georgia, Tennessee. And some of you will see Alabama, Arkansas from the Bud Barn. And read more about both games at your source for sports on the internet, jpsports.com. Now online with a great new look and many new features each week. We'll bring you previews of our upcoming telecast and in-depth coverage of the SEC. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. What about this? Arkansas coming into Auburn, Alabama on this... Saturday afternoon in February, leading by five in the first half. Let's check in on the other SEC game taking place at this time, South Carolina. Ooh, surprising Kentucky in the first half of that one. Wow. You never know Saturday. what's going to happen in this league. Davis shot short, out of bounds. It'll go to the Tigers. Both teams are shooting better than 50% in the first half of this game. And Auburn trying to take charge of this game, trying to get it settled down into a half-court ball game. Arkansas just hanging in there and fighting on both ends of the court. Fabian Fishback, one of four seniors on the floor right now for the Auburn Tigers. Beautiful move by Doc Robinson, but the shot won't go. Brandon Davis rebound for the Razorbacks. Arkansas is really doing a great job. Both ends of the court rebounding, especially. With offensive boards, they've done a nice job getting some extra possessions and keeping Auburn from doing what they do very well on their offensive glass. Blocking foul against the Tigers. Brewer tried to take the charge, but instead he is called for the foul, his second. Brandon Davis steamrolling down that baseline. Sees a head fake. It looks like Brewer may be there, look, turning just a little bit. Davis right, trying to Davis slide around him along that baseline. Davis gets the call. Two shots. Cliff Ellis can't believe it. <laughs> Davis, a 47% free throw shooter, and this was the first of two. Ellis still trying to work the officials. Two great coaches in this ballgame, the two leading in wins active coaches in the Southeastern Conference Cliff Ellis and Nolan Richardson can't find a better matchup than that in college basketball well this league is just teeming with tremendous coaching and these two do as good a job as anybody three coaches in this league have won national titles unbelievable there are probably only 10 active coaches that can say they won a national title and the SEC has three of them Nolan got his in 94 well, look at the quick hands of T.J. Cleveland. And now Walker in transition. Arkansas continues to blister the Nets from the outside. And Cliff Ellis is going to call his troops together and blister them. Arkansas really doing a great job in transition, knocking out those three-point shots. That's been the key. 
Well, Cleveland forced the steal. And then Walker gave it right back to him for the open three. Auburn is not doing a good job, Barry, in picking up Arkansas players on the perimeter in transition. And that's what you have to do. Arkansas doesn't have an inside game at all, so they have to get open three-point shots. You see, they're 7 of 11 on three-pointers. Auburn cannot allow them to get those open shots, either in transition or in their set offense. Got to do a better job getting to those shooters. We talked about uh, the coaches. Nolan Richardson, 15 years at Arkansas. Couple of Final Fours, including, or not including, the national championship. <laughs> the cliff dwellers in this Auburn crowd trying to get into this ball game influenced the officiating a bit for their club. The three-point shooting for Arkansas is just uh, incredible so far in the first half. There's 7 for 11 from the arc. Here goes Brewer, the freshman, fish back out of the corner. And Auburn shooting the ball well also. Yeah, they are, and that's a nice ball movement. They, they remember that they have an advantage inside, trying to take it inside that time. Here's a foul on Doc Robinson. Hands on, says the official. Auburn moved the basketball, tried a little dribble penetration. Brewer, a nice job setting up fish back. An easy little 17-footer along the baseline. Auburn is getting in trouble on their defensive end of the court, not doing, a, not doing the job against these quick Arkansas Razorbacks. Gibson, a sophomore from Farmerville, Louisiana. And a lane violation on the Razorbacks, and the ball goes to Auburn. Auburn sends in number five, Davis Brewer. Robinson with the foul trouble has to take a seat. Brandon, Brandon Davis stepping across the lane. You see him falling in there. <laughs> An easy call for the officials. Blows that one and one opportunity for the Razorbacks, who have been dreadful from the foul line this year anyway. A big part of their troubles this season. 11th in the SEC. Arkansas and free throw shooter. Razorbacks rebound the miss. Here they come with a seven point lead in Auburn. Cleveland, another three, and another made three. Eight out of 12 from the arc in the first half are the Razorbacks. Chris Walker set him up with dribble penetration, and then T.J. Cleveland just drilled it. Auburn has to stick with those shooters. Chris Porter turned his head that time. Almost a turnover. I think this uh, crowd is in shock right now, Barry. Arkansas with a 10-point lead. They started the game pushing the ball inside to Enjai and kind of got away from that in the half court. Now they go back to it. Yeah, that's what they have to do. But at the other end of the court, they have to get to the Arkansas shooters. You see Walker penetrating. Porter came over to double team. That left Cleveland wide open for that three-point shot. Good setup by Walker. Great finish by Cleveland. And Auburn has forgotten about their advantage in this game. They got to jam it inside to Enjai and the Porter. Ooh. <laughs> He's a 69% foul shooter also, and uh, not that uh, not that bad of a foul shooter. Mamadou. He about missed the building with that one. <laughs> Air ball from Mamadou. Native of Dakar, Senegal, makes one out of two. Five points in the first half for Mamadou Njai. But the Razorbacks still lead by nine. Njai rejects it. Lane took it right to him, and Mamadou was ready. Uh, trying to take it to him, trying to, trying to draw a foul, but Mamadou, one of the best in this league at blocking shots. He does a great job swatting him out of there. Second in the league with two blocks a game. He's showing why right there. Arkansas foul, number 20. <laughs> Nobody packs your lunch like Mamadou. <laughs> there was a foul on Brandon Davis before the ball was inbounded against Arkansas. And so... Uh, that doesn't go in the books as a turnover, but it might as well be one. Yeah, yeah. His second personal foul. Carl Baker, going at Substitution, Carl Baker returns. And by the way, where is Chris Porter in this first half? Barry? Yeah. The, uh, Only NBA, one shot. The NBA prospect, we've hardly seen anything from him. A couple of good defensive plays, a couple of steals, but not much production on the offensive end of the court. That's his first point of the game. And 
Auburn needs to settle down. Arkansas tries to force you with their traps and double teams. They try to force you to play a little bit fast and not do the things that you want to do offensively. And Auburn has fallen into that trap, not going to their big people. Gibson, Brewer hits the deck, no call. Baker to Walker, good defense by Auburn. Walker nice. steps it up again. Nice job keeping the dribble penetration down this trip by Auburn. And the result is a turnover. Yeah, that shot clock starts working on you, and it gets tough trying to create that three-point shot at the end of the shot clock. Arkansas with a barrage of three-point field goals in the first half. They have made eight of them as a team. And they lead the Auburn Tigers by seven, 35 to 28. Why are business travelers choosing sleep in? The well-lit grounds, the electronic locks, the walk-in showers, complimentary breakfast. Because it's a place that understands the needs of the business traveler. It's all those things. Plus, the service. Hey, knock it off. Is incredible. If you're traveling on business, stay at Sleep In. In a class by itself. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 Accord? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. We're back in Auburn, Alabama, where a surprising first half is taking place. The Arkansas Razorbacks, 11 and 9, 3 and 4 in conference play, lead Auburn, 10th ranked team in the country, by 7. It's a tough stretch of basketball for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Look at this. The Road Warriors here. They got six out of eight on the road. And um, they're struggling on the road, as is the rest of the SEC West. They were able to beat Mississippi State at home, but having a tough time in this road stretch. Lost all three of these games on the road. Well, things get a little bit easier after this one. Four of their next five at least are at uh, Bud Walton Arena. Yeah, but the opponents they get right. in there, National Rank Club, you got Florida coming in, and Vanderbilt and LSU coming in over the next few weeks. Well, it's uh, just a tough conference. So you're going to play good people if you're playing a conference game. Auburn trying to slow it down and jam it inside, and they turn it over. Well, let's see. Nope, uh, they're going to keep it on Auburn's end of the floor. There's a halftime score from Lexington, and you see South Carolina giving 14th-ranked Kentucky all they can handle. Tubby Smith is giving a nice little chat to his club right around there. There he is. <laughs> they go to Porter, and he rattles it in. First field goal of the afternoon for Chris Porter. And Auburn getting what they want now in the offensive end of the court, taking it inside. Lane. Man, oh man, is Arkansas shooting the basketball well in this first half. And a pretty pass from T.J. Cleveland to set up Alonzo Lane. Great job by the Razorbacks. Eight points for Lane, and Arkansas forces another Auburn turnover, their 12th of the first half. Walker from behind the arc. Just wearing it out from three-point range is Arkansas. They may change this one to a two. Don, L Don Rutledge and Gene Manji talking about it. And I can't tell exactly what the discussion is there, but Walker, a pull-up three-point shot on that trip. They're talking about it, uh, whether or not it is a two or a three. And you see again Chris Walker just... Stepping right up to that three-point line. Arkansas being served from the three-line this afternoon. Well, he had plenty of, uh, of time to, to set his feet and get behind the three-point line. It's just a matter of whether or not he was able to do that or not. Interestingly, after Auburn, on the bucket by Porter, cut it to five, Arkansas has come right back with two consecutive field goals. Push it out to ten. It's hard to tell 
from this angle, all the uh, camera angles we've seen are from the back, and it's hard to see. And right here, a pretty good look at it. It looks like, it, it's still hard to tell. It looks like he probably stepped on the line, but it's hard to see. Well, the discussion continues. We'll take uh, one more look at it. Yeah, he's got to be over the line. It's his left foot is snug against the line, and his right foot is in front of the left. So it looks like a two-point shot, and that's the call from the official. Veteran referee Don Rutledge had gone all the way back around the table and was uh, talking with the scores. And I think they got uh, certainly got this one right, Barry. Yep, I think so as well. And still a nine-point lead for Arkansas, and they're getting great shots in transition. Auburn has to do a better job getting to the shooters on their defensive end of the court and getting to them quickly. One of the new rules this year in college basketball. Enjoy got his feet tangled up. Huh. Good job by Alonzo Lane. He was uh, right there in Enjai's hip pocket. That's a travel. Enjai was rolling early in the game. They were getting the ball to him. He was taking it right at these smaller Arkansas defenders. But lately, he's had a tough time. Doesn't Chris Porter have to find a way to get more involved in this game too, Barry? Porter and Enjai can take advantage down low. Arkansas turns it over. Just a frenetic pace in this first half of basketball, which is what we expected with these two teams going head-to-head. -head. An aggressive defense. Arkansas back to their 40 minutes of hell style that we're used to seeing from this club. Enjai galloping through the lane and took one too many gallops. Enjai uh, starting to press right now. Auburn focused on taking it inside, trying to use their height advantage down low, and Enjai getting a little, little too anxious when he's gotten the ball on his last two trips. And remember, Auburn averages 13 turnovers per game. They've got 14 against this Arkansas team in the first half. That's what great defense can do to you. That's a travel. Brandon Dean catching a, catching a blow, falls to the court, takes advantage, catches breath a little bit. Nolan Richardson grabs Teddy Gibson, says go ahead and check into the basketball game. Uh, he's not real happy with the number of his team's turnovers either, but look at the field goal shooting <laughs> in the first half of the game, Barry. Yeah. Arkansas only about a 42% field goal shooting team on the year. They're 10th in the conference, but today they're lighting it up. And that that will go a long way toward carrying it to a lead in the first half here at all. One of the things that you talked about early on, Barry, was that Arkansas could not be allowed to establish position around the three-point line and shoot uncontested three-pointers. They're too good, and Auburn has not done a good job of finding those people. Yeah, and Auburn doesn't have to worry about the inside game of Arkansas. It's pretty much non-existent. So they have to focus and look for those three-point shooters and get to them. And Chris Porter has only four points in the first half. Njai is now on the bench for Cliff Ellis. Last minute and a half of the first half, and Auburn still struggling. Walker put a little too much flash and dash into it. And made that shot a lot tougher than it needed to be. And Porter is the offended Auburn Tiger. I think it's Cleveland that got in. T.J. Cleveland, second personal foul. With only a minute, minute seven to play in the first half. Cleveland's Cleveland will take a seat along the sidelines. First, first time Gilbert's been in the game, Jason Gilbert. That was a great feed from Brewer to set up Porter down low as well. Really nice pass. Arkansas just trying to trying to hold this lead. They got to be very pleased with the way this first half has gone so far. Just trying to hang on to this lead, playing on the road at Auburn. Remember, Porter has in the last three averaged 22 points per game. And has only five in the first half today against Arkansas. 
And remember, Arkansas playing without their leading scorer, Joe Johnson, who is also in conference games, their leading rebounder as well. 6'8", 225, freshman, not here, attending the funeral of his grandmother, and Arkansas still lighting it up today. One minute to play in the first half. Offensive foul, Alonzo Lane, second personal. Good job by Fishback stepping in to take that charge. And the end of this half going just like Auburn wants it to. As Lane drives the lane, and a little bit too aggressive there. Looks like Fishback may have stepped in after Lane left the ground, but Fishback gets the call. Auburn gets possession and a chance to cut this lead down to five or four. Arkansas's defense, very good, but Coleman drills it. And Arkansas should hold for one shot here. They have a five-point lead. They'll have to be pleased with that. If they can get a score, they'll be up seven or eight. Sharp gambled on the steal. That gets an open shot. Quarter rebound. Shouldn't have taken that shot. You won the last shot of the half. Now Auburn with a chance to close. Ray box out by Gibson. Plenty of time for the Razorbacks. Looks like Arkansas will still get the last shot of the half. <laughs> and that is the end of the first half. A wild one from Auburn, Alabama. The last 30 seconds typical. Scramble up and down the court for, this, for these two ball clubs. Quarter only one field goal in the first half. And got to be exactly what Nolan Richardson was hoping for. His team leads by five at the half. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Jefferson Final Financial. Complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. By Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And by Sleep In. The next time you travel, stay at Sleep In in a class by itself. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 a quart? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Let me win. Let me win. Let me win. Let me win. But if I cannot 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 win. Let me be brave. Let me be brave. Let me be brave in the attempt. The Special Olympics. The Southeastern Conference. Privately training for life. You know, you can't accept less from life. Because then you'll accept less from your work, and then you'll accept less from your weekends, and the next thing you know, you'll accept less from your beer. And you just can't accept less from your beer, because then you'll start accepting less from guys who install satellite dishes, and you might lose reception during an important football game, and hey, that's just wrong. Ice brewed so there's never any watered-down taste. Ice House. Enjoy. During Suncom's ultimate trade-in event, we'll take just about anything as a trade-in for a $100 service credit on airtime or other items. Try and get your brother. <laughs> Maybe I should trade you in. Ryan, it's a good deal. See store for details. Little brother's not eligible for trade-in. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the SEC Good Works team, recognizing the superior community service efforts of league basketball players. Today's honoree is guard Brandon Davis of the University of Arkansas. Brandon is a two-term member of the Razorback Student Athlete Advisory Council. He gives much of his time making numerous special appearances at various children's activities in the Fayetteville area. Jefferson Pilot Sports is proud to salute Brandon Davis for being named a member of the SEC Good Works team. <laughs> 
Fifth ranked Auburn down by five at the end of the first half. Nolan Richardson's Razorbacks really setting the tempo of the first half of this game, and they lead it 39 to 34. Welcome back, everybody. David Steele and Barry Booker. What a first half of basketball as uh, Arkansas is doing what they want to do, and maybe Auburn uh, will have to get back to what they intended to do, and I think that let's get the ball inside of their big folks. Yeah, they early in the first half, Auburn had a lot of success taking it inside to Mamadou Njai. They got away from that later in the first half, but Arkansas lighting it up from three-point land the whole way, eight out of 13 in the first half so far. Really doing a nice job in transition. Well, there's some uh, great plays in the first half of this basketball game and throughout the week of the Southeastern Conference, a lot of great action. Let's take a look at some of the plays of the week from the Southeastern Conference. Weeks, the crossover dribble and the feed. Tony Harris runs and deals. Nice move. Kamara to nice. for the jam. Oh, was that gorgeous? Now strong. Whips it underneath to Lange. Great pass. Here's Lane. He's got Jones in front. Doesn't give it to him. And scored. Oh, what a shot. Oh, oh. How in the world did he get it off? And a bad pass by Pullman. Picked off by Hamilton. Victor wheels on the baseline. And Tennessee's warming up. Prince. Good. Oh, he did it Prince. again. What a tough shot. Wakes to Hamilton. There's your dunk. Coleman for the line. Some great performances this past week in the Southeastern Conference, and the SEC Player of the Week is the sophomore from the University of Tennessee, Vincent Yarbrough. Let's take a look at what he accomplished this past week. The SEC Player of the Week is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Tennessee super sophomore Vincent Yarbrough shined in leading the balls to a pair of conference wins a week ago. For the week, he averaged 24 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, and shot 52% from the field. Yarbrough's finest performance was a 24.9 rebound effort to lead the balls to a 105-76 win over then number seven Auburn. That's Tennessee's Vincent Yarbrough, our Buick Player of the Week. Explain the rules of the game. So congratulations to Vincent Yarbrough of Tennessee, the SEC Player of the Week. Arkansas leads Auburn 39 to 34. Auburn has won 28 straight games. It's in jeopardy right now. It's time for another Piccadilly People profile. You try saying that three times fast with your mouth full of catfish. That's what Sally Sanders comes for twice a week. Plus whatever else catches her eye on our 50-foot spread of hot, wholesome, home-style cooking. This time, it's the cherry pie and the chocolate cake. Oh, well, there's always room on the tray for one more or two. Piccadilly Cafeteria. Who says you can't please everybody? Chick-fil-A has always been committed to helping people achieve their goals in life. One way Chick-fil-A accomplishes this is by providing scholarships, helping students in their quest for higher education. In fact, Chick-fil-A has awarded over three-quarters of a million dollars in scholarships to support students attending Southeastern Conference schools. The SEC is also committed to helping people achieve their goals, and that is why Chick-fil-A is proud to be an official partner with the Southeastern Conference. The strength of the Southeastern Conference is legendary. Ten national championships in the last year, the nation's top football attendance for the 18th consecutive year, and more than 1,100 athletes on the academic honor roll. At Regions Bank, we salute the strength of the SEC because whether it's in athletics or banking, we know that strength and teamwork lead to success. Regions Bank, official bank of the SEC championships. Advance Auto Parts presents the best play of the week in the SEC. We go to Athens, where the Bulldogs' D.A. Lane is off on a fast break. He gets to the rack, spins, but is tripped up, but somehow gets off a circus shot that goes over the outreach hand of a would-be defender and hits nothing but the bottom of the net. What an acrobatic play by Georgia's D.A. Lane. That's the Advance Auto Parts best play of the week. Until next time, I'll talk to you then.
The Arkansas Razorbacks 39, the Auburn Tigers 34. Auburn has not lost a game at home since the NIT in 1998 against Southern Miss. 28 consecutive home court victories for the Auburn Tigers, and Arkansas is trying to pull a major upset here today, Barry. Yeah, they're getting it done with their jump shooting. We'll see if it can continue in the second half. Let's take a look at some scores from around college basketball as we showed you the halftime score in Lexington. Uh, still at the end of the first half, Kentucky, South Carolina, all tied up 14th ranked Wildcats trying to hold off uh, Eddie Fogler's stubborn Gamecocks. Michigan State all over Connecticut at the half. Look at that score. And it is Temple all over Rhode Island. That is a final. Oklahoma leads Baylor in the first. And here in Auburn, Alabama, it's a five-point lead for the Arkansas Razorbacks. 39 to 34 is our halftime score. We'll be back with more from the loveliest village on the plane right after this. Hmm. What do you think? It's got to move left. What about how far? I'd say about two feet. I'm thinking three. That's yeah, your call. Move it three feet left. You heard him. Left. Win the keys to the Buick Golf Dream House. Just guess Tiger's score in the Buick Invitational, and the house, tons of golf, and a new Buick Century could be yours. Log on to tiger.buick.com to enter. Make it five feet. Everybody's an architect. Kickbox your way to total fitness. Kick it, a knockout workout with four-time national aerobics champion Terry Reeves. It's energizing, fat-burning fun. Go three rounds with Terry and her friends. Learn the basics and enjoy a beginner workout in round one. Press for time, take the express route and tone while you box in round two. Ready for the knockout? Round three takes you to the limit with the best total body workout you've ever had. To order the Kick It Knockout Workout, just call 1-800-599-7755 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. School pride and accomplishment are a way of life at the University of Arkansas. Here, I am at my best. At the University of Arkansas, the world is mine to explore. I am an explorer. At the University of Arkansas, I have options to become anything I want to become. It's up to me to decide. The senior walk of graduates at the University of Arkansas is my inspiration. My name will be etched in history. At the University of Arkansas, tradition is the cornerstone of the future. I am that future. Harry, Harry, you fell asleep in front of the TV again? I, I, I was uh, just resting my eyes. You get to the bank? Um, For God, didn't you? I was just on my way. At one in the morning? I, I, to the computer. Auburn Bank Online? Uh, yeah. Fits your lifestyle, doesn't it? Best move Auburn Bank ever made. Your best move was to Auburn Bank. What can I say? Nothing. Uh, just one question. Yes? Yeah, when we bank at home, uh -huh. and Auburn Bank is a member of FDIC, Yeah. they make us a member too. Rest your eyes, Harry. 11 and 9 for the year 3 and 4 in the conference. Auburn comes in 18 and 3 and 6 and 2 in the SEC. But right now it's Arkansas in the first half with a five point lead. Yeah, it's been a very exciting first half. A lot of good looking plays as we get into our halftime highlights, the first half highlights. Auburn started early, taking it inside. Did a real nice job of pounding it in to Mamadou Inja. And also, here's a nice alley oop pass to Damian Fishback. Nice finish, great feed from Doc Robinson. But it's Arkansas's transition play that has carried the game. Here they are scrapping, going after the rebound. It's Gibson with the rebound and pushing it down the court. Arkansas did a great job moving the basketball in early transition, getting wide open threes. There's Brandon Dean hitting one, and here's Chris Walker setting up T.J. Cleveland for a wide open three. Great job by Arkansas shooting the basketball in the first half. Auburn is one of the best rebounding teams in the Southeastern Conference. Arkansas has not been a good rebounding team, but today the rebounds, as you see, as you see here, are even at 13. And that's great for Arkansas. If they can just stay even, they're shooting the basketball so well, as you can see, and uh, really doing a nice job handling the basketball. Three-point field goals, very big for Arkansas. Eight out of 13 from behind the arc. Five-point lead for the Razorbacks. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Good meeting, don't you think? Yeah, it was great. Oh, shoot, I forgot to call the office. Oh, here, use my phone. Oh, thanks. Alabama. Auburn, class of 88. Oh. At Altel, get a free face plate in the colors of your favorite SEC team when you buy a Nokia 5180 digital phone. And get the colors of the game scratch card. Every card offers a prize or value. 
To build the new LeSabre, we didn't just look to research numbers or test scores. We also took a good look at your family. Introducing the all-new 2000 LeSabre, re-engineered with more safety features than any other car in its class. The new 2000 LeSabre by Buick. Auburn University researchers have designed and patented a microchip that will enable airbag systems to react 1,000 times faster during an accident, making them smarter, more reliable, and most importantly, safer. Gentlemen, Jeff Burton, start your engine. Let's go. Don't be afraid to trade a little paint, kid. Hit him. Hit him again. All right. It's all about turning left. Turn left. Turn left. <laughs> and most important, pit stops. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hardy's Frisco Combo, a perfectly charbroiled burger on grilled sourdough bread, plus fries and a drink, only $2.99. Who's next? Go on. SEC Basketball is being brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Financial. Complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. By the all-new 2000 LeSabre by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. And by Alltel. The power to simplify. Arkansas 39, Auburn 34 at the end of the first half. We're just about set for the second half of basketball from Auburn, Alabama. Go online with the Southeastern Conference at secsports.com. This interactive site features up-to-date statistics as well as cybercast coverage of conference events throughout the year. Fans could also shop at the SEC Superstore. Don't miss all the action at secsports.com. First quarter kind of struggled in the first half. You can see his number. All, number is only six points and two rebounds. Auburn needs a lot better production from him in this second half. Auburn has more turnovers in the first half of this game than they had in 14 entire games throughout this season. Yeah, 15 turnovers in the first half. The Arkansas quickness and quick hands getting to Auburn so far in this ball game. And Arkansas has committed 14 turnovers themselves. Now let's see, we might have another one. Nope, it was touched last by Auburn. Well, Arkansas got a break. And Arkansas has spread the court, all five players surrounding the three-point line, trying to create some driving lanes so they can get to the basket. There's the turnover. <laughs> well, he just uh, couldn't wait to even it up at 15 apiece. <laughs> Only took 21 seconds to do that. And when Auburn can settle Arkansas into a half-court game, they are very effective on the defensive end. It's in transition that Arkansas has gotten a lot of open shots. Doc Robinson enters it to Enjai. Finds the open man on the diagonal. Now Porter with 10 on the shot clock. He's got to go at him. Had a good shot from Pullman, but it wouldn't drop. And it did. I really like to see Chris Porter go at the defenders of Arkansas. Gibson's three is no good. Injai rebounds for Auburn. Injai in the paint. Tied up. Walker tied him up, and they'll jump it. <laughs> And Njai again, putting the ball on the floor. He's got, he's got to catch it and make a move with it. It's seven feet tall. He does not need to be dribbling the basketball with all this quickness of Arkansas on the court. Trying to get around lane right there, but you know the guards are going to be coming after you when you dribble it when you're seven feet tall. Auburn on the possession arrow. Robinson, a long three. Very long three-point shot. Now Arkansas in transition again. Auburn doing a better job getting back so far in the second half. What about 
the defensive rebounding that Arkansas has done in the first half. They've allowed Auburn very few second chances. And that has been superb. Auburn, one of the better offensive rebounding clubs in the conference. Arkansas, not a very good rebounding team at all, but doing a good job on the glass today. Alonzo Lane got caught holding Mamadou Njai and commits his third personal foul. And now Auburn set on trying to jam the ball inside, trying to get it in there to Mamadou Njai and Chris Porter where they can do damage. Foul number three on Lane, so he'll have to take a seat. Larry Satchel replaces Alonzo Lane. Lane had eight points in the first half. Scored six of them very quickly. Arkansas settling into their 2-3 zone on this inline out-of-bounds play. Let's look at Porter's hand to take. Fishback volleyballs it in. Damian Fishback just kept going after it, kept going after those rebounds until he finally got one down. That breaks the scoring drop in the second half. Brandon Davis bowls over Chris Porter, no foul. Dean missed the leaner. Here come the Tigers trailing by three. Robinson rejected by Brandon Dean. Great D by Brandon Dean. A three for Walker. Enzai rebound for the Tigers. Now can Auburn maintain their composure, slow this thing down, get it a half-court game, and jam it inside? Trying to get the ball inside to Chris Porter. Brandon Dean had him fronted one. This is the pace that Auburn wants to play. Holman ties the game. And any pace is a good pace when Scott Coleman's stepping out there drilling those long three-point shots. Scott Coleman, the junior from Roswell, Georgia. Here's Coleman swinging around the screen and knocking out that 22-footer. Auburn has tied this game, and Nolan Richardson wants to talk about it. A pointless second half so far. Having a tough time. Our Piccadilly scoreboard, Kentucky has now gone on top of South Carolina in the second half up in Lexington, Michigan State. Look at that score at the half, two top ten teams. Temple all over Rhode Island. And Oklahoma trailing Baylor in the first half. Defending national champs with 17 points in the first half. Unbelievable. The Cliff Dwellers. Going crazy early in the second half. Their Tigers on a 5 to nothing run have tied the game. Rescued by Davis before it crossed the midcourt line. Shot clock is at 10. Almost a steal by Porter. That would have been a highlight reel dunk at the other end if he was able to hold on to it. He slaps high five with his coach, Cliff Ellis. The crowd is into it. And the Auburn defense has really become aggressive. Shot clock down. Walker. Satchel not a threat to shoot it from there. The shot clock is at one. Walker at least got it up to the rim and gets the <laughs> rebound. Yeah, Satchel didn't realize the shot clock was ticking down. Walker got that shot off. Did a great job just chasing it down. But again, in the half-court setting, Arkansas is going to have a tough time scoring points. A lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball for the Razorbacks right now. And Walker turns it over. Coleman saves it to Doc Robinson. Coleman's open. He took a dribble, then drilled it. is in the lead for the first time since 1916. Not the year, the score. <laughs> it it only seems like the year. Exactly. <laughs> and Arkansas still has not scored in the second half. And it's deafening in here. 
The crowd really in this ballgame. Arkansas needs a basket to quiet the crowd. Another turnover. And Pullman is doing it all for the Auburn Tigers. Great defense and then taking the ball to the basket. <laughs> His corner is up. This whole gym is up. Auburn Tigers got it going right now. Here's Porter again with a knockaway. Porter does a great job reaching in, using his hands, and then Scott Pullman taking it strong to the basket. Brandon Dean should just back off, play good D, make Pullman take a tough shot, but he reaches in and fouls, gives him a, gives him two foul shots. Arkansas number uh, Walker will take a seat on the Arkansas bench, and uh, Blake Adams will check back in for the Razorbacks. Walker has a bloody lip and a little bit of blood on his jersey, so he has to come out of the game. Meanwhile, Scott Pullman now with seven second-half points in the first five minutes and two seconds. And unbelievable the difference so far between the first half and the second half. Arkansas can't get anything done offensively. Auburn slowed him down, made it a half-court game. And Arkansas just can't get anything going. Razorbacks basketball with 14.55 to play. All Auburn in the second half. After the Razorbacks control things in the first half from Auburn, Alabama. We'll be right back. for the new LeSabre didn't just come from a research center or design facility. It also came from your family. Introducing the all-new 2000 LeSabre, re-engineered with more safety features than any other car in its class. The new 2000 LeSabre by Buick. Good meeting, don't you think? Yeah, it was great. Oh, shoot, I forgot to call the office. Oh, here, here's my phone. Oh, thanks. Alabama. Auburn, class of 88. Oh. At Altel, get a free face plate in the colors of your favorite SEC team when you buy a Nokia 5180 digital phone. And get the colors of the game scratch card. Every card offers a prize or value. We're giving away $1,000. Yes, $1,000 in cash and prizes will be given away at Westlake Mall's gigantic indoor flea market. Saturday, February 12th, we're located in the Westlake Mall in Bessemer. Take exit 108 from I-20 across from Kmart on Bessemer Silver Highway. Open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 9 to 6, year-round. 250 inside heated and air-conditioned booths of guaranteed unbelievable bargains at Westlake Mall's gigantic indoor flea market. Come on in this weekend and register to win the $1,000 giveaway. February 12th, be there at Westlake Mall's gigantic indoor flea market. Auburn Tigers nine to nothing in the second half, and they've taken a four-point lead against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coming up this week in SEC basketball action on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Split game, Alabama against Arkansas, or some of you will see Georgia against the Tennessee Volunteers. That's Wednesday, February the 9th. Check your local listing. Dave, you remember in the first half, the jumper by Chris Walker that they couldn't decide whether it was a two or a three? Wow. That is the first basket since that jumper with 241 left in the first half. Alonzo Lane emphatically ending the streak. Man, he went up with some authority. Injai was on his back when he threw it down. Lane driving strong and just hammering it home. Authoritatively. You wonder what Nolan Richardson said to his team in the timeout. Hey, it came out with some fire. Delane misses the free throw. It does break the drought and cuts the lead to two. Thirteen to nothing run by Auburn since late in the first half. They have taken control of this ball game. Again, they hit a couple of threes in the first half. This one's off target. Cleveland mishandling the ball, and there's Pullman, the ever-present Scott Pullman. <laughs> the kid's on fire in the second half. He is lighting it up, and Arkansas can do no right. 
Davis answers with the three. Starting to get it going. That's what they have to do. Get in transition, get those open, quick jump shots, and just knock them down. Three threes in the second half for Scott Pullman. Pullman double teamed in the corner. Dangerous pass. McGadney had it. We got a foul on Cleveland. Trying to rip it away. You mentioned Cleveland leads this league in steals and over three per game. Trying to get those quick hands in there. Take it away from Inja. And now has three fouls. Njai off the floor. Porter returns for the Tigers. Porter still not doing much damage this afternoon, but Scott Coleman has got it going lately. Working against his zone defense. He has made four three-point field goals in the second half alone. And the basket looks like the Gulf of Mexico to him. He's just throwing everything up and in. And the foul is called. We'll keep it at the Arkansas end of the floor. <laughs> Here's Pullman. Everything he shoots is going down. Gets that open shot against his own defense and just buries it. Shooting the ball with so much confidence. He's on a roll. Now Blake Evans having a tough time in his homecoming game this afternoon. Shot won't go, but the foul on Lane. <laughs> Gene Manji and Chris Porter hanging on to each other. Trying to help each other stay upright. And now Porter will go to the foul line. That foul is on Alonzo Lane. You see the reach in. And that will be the fourth personal foul. And then Manji holding on. Looks like WWF action <laughs> underneath the basket. Guys holding on for dear life. Porter perfect on the free throw line this afternoon is now five for five. He's got uh, five of his seven points from the line so far this afternoon, and he's starting to come alive as an aggressive cut down the lane and really took the ball strong to the basket. Puts him on the foul line right now. Oh, the broadcaster's jinx. Works every time, doesn't it? Gibson inside to Walker. Offensive foul on Gibson. Porter took the charge. Chris Porter once again stepping up with a big defensive play. Teddy Gibson driving strong down the lane, but Chris Porter is going to hang right in there. Gibson trying to drop, drop it off, but Porter did a great job standing in, taking the hit. Arkansas just hasn't been able to get the game into the tempo that they liked in the first half. Exactly. Coleman. Oh, <laughs> it like it was going in. <laughs> he was almost out of bounds. Gibson. Big, strong rebound by Mac McGadney. <laughs> McGadney just takes it away from T.J. Cleveland using that size. Porter fouled before he got the shot up. That's good spacing by Auburn. Because, uh, not very many times today, Porter has caught the ball in that area of the floor with that much room to operate. Yeah, and a great job just handling the pressure. Arkansas pressing full court. Auburn spread their players out and attacked the press very well, getting it to Porter in the middle of the lane. Tiger segment number 11, Reggie Sharp. For Reggie Damian Sharp Fishback. replaces Damian Fishback to Cliff Ellis. Tigers trying to take control of this game after they trailed for most of the first half. Sharp will put it in play for the Tigers. McGandy. Davis rebound for the Razorbacks. Good defense that trip by Carl Baker. Sharp tipped it away and out of bounds away from Walker. He's done a good job on Chris Walker today. Averaging uh, almost 13 points per game. Walker has only four. 
Playing without their leading scorer, freshman Joe Johnson. Auburn is without David Hamilton, one of their top reserves on the inside, due to death in his family as well. Tough shot. In and out. Walker couldn't get it to go. Baker runs it down for Arkansas. Auburn still got it at the pace they want, and it's a slow half-court game at this point. Porter tipped it away, but out of bounds. Touch last by Jamison Brewer. Very active defender. One of many things he can do out on the floor, but so far, only one field goal for Porter. His Tigers, though, lead by six with 11.33 to play. Get a free face plate in the colors of your favorite SEC team when you buy a Nokia 5180 digital phone. And get the colors of the game scratch card. Every card offers a prize or value. Okay, honey. How about this? I'm seeing a cab. Are you seeing plumbing? <laughs> Imagine a big porch with a stone fireplace, plenty of room for the grandkids. When you find yourself writing the story of your life, Tell it to Jefferson Pilot Financial. We'll help make it happen. My big pain with dancing bears? No. Aw. Oh. <laughs> you had me, Tilton Bear. Come on. <laughs> Give a dollar a month to Project Share. Just like disco. You'll never miss it. Help heat the homes of Alabama's elderly and disabled. Check the box on your power bill to share the warmth. Give a dollar a month to Project Share. Just like a fruitcake. You'll never miss it. Help heat the homes of Alabama's elderly and disabled. Check the box on your power bill to share the warmth. Auburn outscoring Arkansas 16 to 5 in the second half. They lead by six with just over 11 and a half minutes to play of the game. Do you want to talk SEC basketball? We've got the place. Go online at jpsports.com. Connect to the SEC Game of the Week chat room brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Financial. The chat room is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The SEC Game of the Week chat room presented by Jefferson Pilot Financial. Another Arkansas turnover. Chris Walker not able to handle the basketball in that corner. Auburn taking charge here in the second half. 20 turnovers now on the Razorbacks, and six of them in the second half. Porter! Oh, oh, dying over the top <laughs> from the Raptors. Chris Porter jamming it home. Auburn's biggest lead of the game. 52 44, the Tigers with 11 minutes to play. Davis finds an open shot. Good hustle by Walker to rescue it for the Razorbacks. But those shots were going in in the first half, Barry. Yeah, they're getting the open shots. Travel. Not able to knock them out. And the turnovers are just killing Arkansas. But Chris Porter following up this shot. Unbelievable. The athleticism going up and over Brandon Davis and just hammering it home. And the athletes you will see in the Southeastern Conference, incredible. And Chris Porter, among the best. Wham! Hammering it in and Cliff Ellis. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a good shot. He's leading the cheerleaders. And the crowd really responding after that play. And again, Porter to the basket. Chris Porter lifting his game and lifting his ball club here in the second half. Roland Richardson will try and stop the Auburn momentum. It's a runaway train right now. The Tigers are roaring downhill. And it was Scott Pullman early in the second half getting things going, getting Auburn the lead. And now Chris Porter just dominating this ball game, taking it over for the Auburn Tigers. 
Water is now in double figures, has 11. Auburn is on an eight to nothing run, and it has been all Tigers in the second half after Arkansas set the tempo of the game in the first half. And with about 2.40 left, again, late in the first half, Arkansas led 39 to 30. Since then, it's been Auburn 24, Arkansas 5. Incredible run. Porter now with the 11. Scott Pullman has 19, including four threes in the second half. But it's defense. We've talked on Auburn offense, but their defense has been sensational in the second half of the game. There's Pullman getting a, a well-deserved break. And Chris Porter, extraordinarily active. You saw him there jumping in the passing lane trying to get that steal. Brewer defending uh, Cleveland. Very quick guards there. Baker just lost the ball. Jamison Brewer drives it. He throws one down. It's contagious. Brewer, the point guard, winding it up and hammering it home. Everything going Auburn's way here in the second half. The Coliseum is rocking. And a foul quiets him down. And Jamison Brewer, a big point guard at 6'5", but here he is, Dr. J style, as his uh, Dr. J style hairdo reflects, winding it up and hammering it home for the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> and styling with Chris Porter, his buddy. Remarkable turnaround in the second half. Arkansas really out of sync offensively. They can get nothing established. Here's a good shot for Baker. Walker's down to a several offensive rebounds to keep possessions alive, but he missed five. Cleveland an offensive rebound. And this young Arkansas club, they're doing a good job just to hang in there in this ball game. And offensive boarding on this trip, this will be their fifth shot. None of them go down. Arkansas shot 52% in the first half. Dreadful field goal shooting in the second. They've gone five minutes without score. And only five points in nearly 12 minutes of this second half. Unbelievable. Two for 15 in the half for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Fifth back, first one up. Good D by Walker. Well, they can't put it in. Tatum made a nice move, but couldn't finish. Unbelievable. The wheels have come off for the Arkansas Razorbacks, yet they're still only down by 12 points. This young ball club still hanging in there. If they can just get it going a little bit, they can fight their way back into this game. Cliff Ellis realized it, and he wants to exhort his club. Arkansas number four, Jason. Well, the Tigers stop the clock with 8-10 to play. Their defense has been a swarming in the half court. They've shot the ball fairly well, Auburn, in the second half. Not as well as in the first half, but their defense has really been outstanding. Yeah, Auburn is so tough in that half court setting, and they have slowed the game down, forced Arkansas into a half court offensive game, and Arkansas has had a tough time dealing with it. All right, so Auburn with the advantage. Uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks totally out of sync right now. What have they got to do to turn it around, Barry? Well, they got to get back into that transition play, which is what had them going in the first half. Push it down the court quickly, take those quick three-point shots, and then just hope they fall for them. Arkansas has missed its last nine shots from the field. And that's no way to get back into a game. And the confidence so shaky. This Arkansas club with seven freshmen, only one senior, only one junior. So they're having a tough time holding it, holding it together on the road here at Auburn, one of the toughest places to play in America. Scott Pullman returned during the timeout. Doesn't waste any time, and this one gets wedged. <laughs> Well, he's had it going so well early in the first half, but <laughs> that is embarrassing. But he made four threes earlier in the first half, which really kick-started the Auburn Tigers offense. They lead by 12.
Do rich people deserve more space than the rest of us? Was technology meant to improve their lives alone? Do the stars shine for their eyes only? Introducing the special edition of Century 2000. It's the first limited edition that isn't limited to the rich. Get a special Millennium Package offer on the special edition Century 2000. The new Century 2000 by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. Good meeting, don't you think? Yeah, it was great. Oh, shoot, I forgot to call the office. Oh, here, use my phone. Oh, thanks. Alabama. Auburn, class of 88. Oh. At Altel, get a free face plate in the colors of your favorite SEC team when you buy a Nokia 5180 digital phone. And get the colors of the game scratch card. Every card offers a prize or value. Join us Wednesday for SEC Basketball 2000. The sixth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers play host to the Georgia Bulldogs. The Vols look back to get on track and continue their quest for the SEC crown. Our other game pits the Alabama Crimson Tide against these Arkansas Razorbacks from the Bud Barn. Check your local listings for the game in your area. And don't miss the action Wednesday starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Georgia, Tennessee. Some will see Alabama, Arkansas in a Western Division showdown. Our game summary, you see Auburn with a 12-point lead. Second-half field goal shooting, Barry. Only two for 16 for the Razorbacks. Incredible. And Scott Pullman has a very nice game. And uh, Auburn has uh, taken an advantage on the points off turnover of uh, 10 in that category now. Scott Pullman and Chris Porter carrying the load for the Auburn Tigers in the second half. And Auburn has no turnovers in the second half after committing 15 in the first half. And also very big for Cliff Ellis's team. They have uh, not turned the ball over in the second half of the game. The foul is on Fishback, his first. Now, Dave, remember Wednesday night, Arkansas fell down by 20 to Ole Miss. They were down 20, 27 at one point in the second half, but down 20 with six minutes to go at Ole Miss, and they fought their way back down by one late in that ball game, and, but finally fell. We'll see if they can do it again today against the top 10 Team. Tough environment. At Oxford, they were able to do it. This is Dionisio Gomez, a sophomore, checking in for the first time, number 33 for Arkansas. Brandon Dean with it. Now to Chris Walker. Gomez up top. Shot clock at three. They just have to heave on and then a whistle. And a foul on uh, the Razorbacks, I think. It's on Gomez, his first. Our Piccadilly scoreboard, Kentucky, has taken a seven-point lead. That game was tied at the half against South Carolina. Michigan State still blowing out number seven, Connecticut. And Temple rolled over Rhode Island. Also at the half, Baylor leads number 18, Oklahoma. Is, can that be right? Wow. Foul shots. Arkansas one for 13. No, I think it's one for three. <laughs> one for three. Okay. Yeah, they've only shot three free throws. Pullman, uh, a pushback rather. That's his first free throw attempt of the game. Hey, it's tough on the road. Only three, three. foul shot attempts so far in this ball game. And Auburn will likely spend a lot of time at the foul line as we go down the stretch. We'll see if they can shoot them well today. Push back a 79% foul shooter. Knocks in both, and here you see the total <laughs> substitution by Nolan Richardson. Yeah, we'll try this unit. Try this ball club. Incredible the depth and the confidence that Nolan Richardson has in his players. He he likes to make them earn their scholarship. Let them get out there and get a chance to play. That's how you learn, that's how you improve. Too much hands-on by Jay Sharp, or Reggie Sharp, rather. That's his uh, first foul. Talk about Nolan Richardson's affinity to shift things around. He's had 16 different starting lineups this year with a new one tonight. The entry pass goes out of bounds. Davis trying to hook up with Lane, and Arkansas turns the ball over again. Well, this is going to be a diff difficult year for Nolan Richardson and the Razorbacks. Seven freshmen on their roster. 
Look at the scoring drought they're going through. This will be a tough year, and it's a tough stretch. Six out of eight games on the road with a young team. You're going to have trouble. Trying to get the tempo of the game back where they like it with this full-court pressure. But now Auburn settles into the half-court offense. Sharp. First field goal of the game for Reggie Sharp. Nice little move by Reggie Sharp. Shake free from Brandon Dean and knock out the jumper. Oh, from Brandon Davis. Biggest lead of the game for the Auburn Tigers, 16 points. Their defense smothering Arkansas in the second half. Great <laughs> effort by Jamison Brewer. The ball will stay at the Arkansas end, but uh, so far that hasn't been all that great for Nolan Richardson's team. They've missed their last 11 shots from the floor. Here's Jamison Brewer, Reggie Sharp keeping it alive, and Brewer going after the basketball. Not quite able to come up with it, but great hustle and great effort by Auburn, especially on the defensive end of the court. They have slowed Arkansas down, not allowed them to get those quick three-point shots the way they did in the first half. Arkansas has gone eight minutes without scoring. And they turn it over again. 24 turnovers in the game. And still holding at five points in the entire second half so far. Five points since 241 left in the first half. Unbelievable. A long range bomb by Sharp is long. Arkansas tries to get something going at the offensive end again. Well, they can't buy one, can they? Lane with a rebound. He throws it away. Reggie Sharp with Gibson there and a foul on Gibson. Arkansas finally got a very good shot on their offensive end of the court. Just couldn't get it down and then throw it away. Auburn in complete control of this ball game. Up by 16. Reggie Sharp off and running. And the only choice for Gibson there is to foul, send him to the foul line, make him earn his two points. Reggie Sharp, two shots. Reggie Sharp, a transfer from West Georgia College. The left-hander shooting 56% from the foul line. It is still a 16-point lead for Auburn. Razorbacks in number 13, Brandon Dean. Brandon Dean returns Brandon for the Davis. Razorbacks as Brandon Davis checked out. And Chris, Chris Walker, Walker comes back into Walker the game. Is in for Teddy, Gibson. Teddy Gibson coming to the Nolan Richardson sideline. Sharp missed both shots, and Auburn still leads by 16. Remember, Arkansas led by five at the half. No call. Walker is open. <laughs> and they still cannot put the ball in the basket. Remarkable turnaround in this game. There's a glass cover over the basket right now, apparently. Arkansas cannot penetrate it. That is the first Auburn turnover of the second half. Now, they committed 15 in the first <laughs> half and then played uh, better than 15 minutes without committing another. A senior ball club should be able to handle the basketball that way. <laughs> Mamadou throwing another one out of there. Porter gambled to get the steal. That left Baker open. And finally, Arkansas, which went... Almost 10 minutes without scoring. Nine and a half minutes or better. And they finally get off uh, that 44-point mark. Foul on Dean. Arkansas, a nice pickpocket move by Dean, but not quite able to come up with it. Second half points, 26 to 7 in the second half. Unbelievable run by the Auburn Tigers. But they are a great defensive club, and they have this capability, especially at home, to just grab a team by the throat defensively and take control of the game. Brewer goes to the foul line to shoot two. And you see Arkansas just three free throw attempts in the game. Rather a one and one for Brewer, and he misses the front end. When you rely on three-point shooting, you're not going to get fouled very much. And Arkansas falling victim to that today. 
Auburn wearing him out from the foul line. Blake Edens comes off of a screen. Can't pull the trigger. Auburn so aggressive in this half-court defense. Enjai reached over the top and deflected the ball out of bounds. Well, the offensive woes continue for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Auburn trying to build its 28-game home court win streak, and they lead by 14 with 3.53 to play in the game. We'll be back after these messages from your local SEC station. Meet me where it always feels like summertime. The swing of Wilson's Pond or old Mahoney sign. The good times that you're craving are just around the bend. Meet me at the Dairy Queen where the feeling never ends. Isn't Dairy Queen a great family place? Because there's something for everyone. And they're always running a special. This month, sink your teeth into the home-style Blitz Burger and enjoy. Come on to that feeling and meet me at DQ. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to a 13-year civil rights struggle. More in a moment. If you've been turned down for a credit card in the past, visit First Tuskegee Bank. You will be absolutely approved for a secured Visa Classic credit card. All that's needed is a quick application, a small membership fee, and a deposit amount as low as $200. With First Tuskegee Bank's express service, you can enjoy the many benefits of your Visa credit card in as few as five days with travel discounts, emergency cash, and even eyewear discounts. Call First Tuskegee Bank. Make us your bank of choice. When Dr. King fell to an assassin's bullet on April 4th, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee, citizens in many major cities reacted violently, while other Americans, black and white, wondered what would happen to his dream. Four days later, Representative John Conyers, a Michigan Democrat, submitted the first legislation proposing King's birthday as a holiday. 18 years later, January 20th, 1986, would mark the first observance of Dr. King's birthday as a legal national holiday. Auburn leads Arkansas 60-46 to with 3.53 to play in the basketball game in Auburn, Alabama. Now let's take a look at our all-tell play of the game. And you might have guessed our all-tell play of the game brought to you by Chris Porter. The miss from Reggie Sharp. And then Porter hammering it home with one hand going up high over the traffic in front of him. The miss shot and Porter. The great timing flying in there to hammer it home. And that is our all-tell play of the game. And Cliff Ellis says, yes, it's good. <laughs> Uh-oh. Need to take a recount on the play of the game. That one rivals the earlier dunk by Chris Porter. We may need to replace that basket down there. Cliff Ellis still leading cheers on the sideline. Auburn's got it rolling. Enzyme got him with the body. <laughs> Cliff and the Auburn Tigers having the ball this afternoon. Not having much fun in the first 20 minutes of this game, but they're having a ball out here in the second half. They're making up for it right now. Only the fourth free throw of the game for the Razorbacks. And Cleveland, who has six points and two assists, makes the free throw to make it a 62-46 Walburn lead. Still only eight points for Arkansas in the second half. Incredible run by the Auburn Tigers, and that's just great defense mainly. There it is, 14% field goals in the second half by Arkansas. And a lot of that caused by the Auburn aggressive defense. Arkansas is three for 22 <laughs> from the field, and only one for 11 three-point shooting in the second half after they made eight of 13 in the first half. Here's an opportunity in transition, a rare chance for them. And that's what happened. The Walburn stopped turning the ball over in the second half, and that play was taken away from him. And the open shot, Gibson able to get it down. And amazingly, Arkansas still only down 11 right now. And 2.30 to play as Porter fouled on his way to the basket. 
And we'll get a pair of free throws. Brandon Dean got him. That is his third. Doc Robinson handling the pressure, the senior point guard. Getting it to the man, Chris Porter, going to the basket. Now Porter back to the foul line. Porter kind of a, a quiet first half, but has livened things up in the second half now with 13 points on four of six field goals. And he's only missed once from the foul line in seven attempts. Roland Nolan. Having a tough time th with this year's ball club, but uh, Nolan Richardson is going to have his club near the top of the SEC. And giant offensive rebound. Skip it in with the left hand. Well, Auburn kind of putting things away right now. Well, that's a foul on Chris Porter. His first of the game. Auburn foul on number four, Chris Porter. That's his first. Here's Mamadou doing some work inside. Nice little up fake, up and under move. Can't get that down, but just volleyballs it back in with that left hand. Gets a kind roll off the off the rim. Fish back returns and Satchel for Arkansas with 2.22 to play. You don't get the sense that the Razorbacks can pull what they did in Oxford just a couple of nights ago with that uh, furious comeback. Auburn right now has this game under control. Yeah, Auburn, a top 10 team in the country. One of the best in the SEC. It's going to be a lot tougher to pull that off than against the Ole Miss Rebels on Wednesday. A couple of free throws by Walker certainly help things out to make it a 12-point game again. And Auburn wanting to work the clock right now, wanting to take that shot clock down low here in the in these final few possessions of the first half. They set it up again with a shot clock at 13. Here's Doc Robinson trying to make a one-on-one -on -one move to create a shot with the clock, shot clock winding down. Robinson, a rare Doc Robinson turnover. Great D by Gibson. Anticipated the pass off, backed off, stepped in the passing lane, and took it away. But they used up all of the shot clock. Gibson hoists a three. And Arkansas loses the ball out of bounds. And as long as Auburn can use that shot clock and run things down, they not any chance that they're going to lose this ball game. Now Arkansas forced to foul. That's not really the Auburn player that Arkansas wants to put on the free throw line, although he has struggled today. One of the best foul shooters in the league, Scott Pullman, missed two straight earlier, but he's a good one. Only one for four from the line this afternoon. His three-point shooting in the early moments of the second half really got... Auburn going offensively, and there he is with his 20th point Arkansas of the afternoon. Just one shy of his season high. Scott Pullman has been playing very well lately. 17 points in three of his last five outings, and uh, add this one to it, having a really good day today against Arkansas. Advances the season high for Scott Pullman and gives Auburn a 14-point lead. Reggie Sharp in. Scott Pullman checks out. And Arkansas has got a lot of work to do with 90 seconds left trailing, and that's not going to help him much. Tatum turns it over. Robinson to the basket. Doc Robinson, the senior All-American, just taking it in for the easy lay-in, putting this thing away for the Auburn Tigers. Satchel in there working on the offensive glass for Arkansas, and we have a foul against Auburn. Nice board in there by Satchel. Jamison Brewer got the foul. That's his third. And let's see who they put on the free throw line. It looks like Jason Gilbert. <laughs> is going to step to the line. I thought Satchel was the man who got fouled. <laughs> I think you're right. And Don Rutledge. No, he is going to go ahead and let Gilbert 
take these two foul shots. I don't think he was anywhere near the action, but there he is on the line. You see, there's uh, one difference between Gilbert and Satchel. <laughs> Satchel's 35%, Gilbert's 84%. <laughs> that's, that's only one of the many differences between Gilbert and Satchel. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Gilbert knocks but them both in. It works. <laughs> Auburn by 14 with a minute five remaining. Well, it looks like the Tigers are going to get out of here. They've, uh, they flirted with catastrophe early in this game, trailing at the end of the first half, but really came out and played tremendous basketball early in the second half, establishing themselves here at home again. Had to fight their way through it with this veteran club with four seniors. Able to hold it together at home and hold off these Arkansas Razorbacks. Enjai way above everybody for the rebound. Porter couldn't put it in. Here comes Arkansas. They need points in a hurry. Only 29 seconds left. That's a dangerous pass. Here goes Chris Porter. Behind the head. Two-handed jammer. Showing the entire repertoire today. Chris Porter. His dunk series this afternoon. What a day for Porter. What a second half for Porter and for the Auburn Tigers. Tatum. And that's an appropriate ending for Arkansas's offense in this second half. Here's they the finish. Have not been able to score, but Porter has. <laughs> Unbelievable finish by Chris Porter. Chris Porter on his way to Chipola Junior College today. Going to have his, his junior college uniform retired today. And a great day here for the Auburn Tigers. His number will be retired down in Mariana, Florida. And the way he finished today, they might be putting number up on the Raptors here at Auburn one of these days. An 18-point win for the Auburn Tigers. SEC Basketball has been brought to you by Century by Buick, a luxury car for everyone. By Jefferson Pilot Financial, complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. And by Alltel, the power to simplify. What a finish by the Auburn Tigers as they... Uh, Really put it on the Arkansas Razorbacks in the closing minutes. Finished with an 18-point victory, 73 to 55. Arkansas battled hard, but couldn't keep up in the second half, Eric. Scott Pullman and Chris Porter, just too much for Arkansas down the stretch of this ball game. And Porter put on a dunk display in the closing minutes for the Auburn Tigers. He finished with 18 points, the All-American from Abbeville, Alabama. That'll do it as.